So I'm Daniel Levy and I'm welcoming here to New America Foundation Jeremy ben -Ami. Jeremy, you're here. We're about to do the launching, the official launching of your new book, New Voice for Israel. Give me the very potted version of what you want the takeaway when people have finished this book and they say, oh, to be. It, it, clearly to me, the takeaway is a call to action. Uh, you know, that for those of us who care deeply about Israel and the future of the state of the Jewish people, uh, this is a critical moment and uh, the future of the state really does hang in the balance and uh, the call to action is we need to change the way American politics work when it comes to Israel and the voices of moderate pro-Israel, pro-peace Jews need to come to be heard. Second, the way the Jewish community works needs to change and we need to open up the conversation, not silence voices of dissent. Uh, otherwise, we're going to see the American Jewish community wither as well. Uh, but most importantly, uh, for the state of Israel, uh, the, the opportunity to be a Jewish and a democratic homeland hangs in the balance. If separation doesn't happen with the Palestinian people into two states now, we may lose the chance for a viable two-state solution and thereby, I think, lose the chance for a viable Israel. Now, you address those questions and you bring this book out not as a... a observer from the sidelines of all of these developments. You brought this out three plus years now um, since founding, leading, and being the driving force behind J Street. When you reflect back on those three years, what has impeded not being able to get more progress despite the great achievements that J Street has undoubtedly made? Well, there's impediments on all fronts. Uh, you know, I think, number one, you'd want to see a government of Israel that was going in a different direction. So we are trying to help change the course of a country whose government is driving it off a cliff. And so impediment number one is we're trying to help re-steer a boat that is under someone else's control. And so that's problem number one. Problem number two is I think here in this country, uh, the government, the Obama administration, has uh, not been as assertive and, and uh, proactive as we might have hoped in trying to help make that change, uh, you know, course correction take place and has been a little bit more uh, subject to the winds of politics than we might have hoped. Uh, certainly it is partly the American Jewish establishment that is not used to hearing dissent and not used to hearing uh, different voices and particularly not used to hearing criticism of the policies of the state of Israel. Let, let's stick with that last theme, the American Jewish establishment, because you're not the first member of your family to be pushing against the tide. Right. Um, and you go into this in your book and, and really you draw the analogy uh, between your father whose politics on Israel were uh, to the right of, of both of us, <laughs> to uh, the revisionist Jabotinskyite right-wing Zionist tradition. But here in the U.S., the group that he was central to were going around the American Jewish establishment in the 30s and saying, get on board with the Zionist project. Jews in Europe face a pending catastrophe. And you draw the analogy to the message that you've been trying to spread about the pending catastrophe that Israel faces. How do you reflect back on that and say, is there more receptivity now or is the establishment as closed as it ever was? Well, I think it's an absolutely fascinating parallel. Uh, you know, that in the 1930s and early 1940s, those with right of center politics, and in some cases fairly far right of center politics, were really trying to sound the alarm bell and saying disaster is looming and the establishment uh, tried to shut down the voices of dissent. The establishment was left of center, it was socialist Zionist, and uh, they attacked and uh, smeared and libeled, uh, planted informants in the offices of, uh, got my father drafted into the U.S. Army uh, in, in 1943, all in an effort to shut down the voices of dissent. And I find a similar dynamic today when those of us who are slightly left of center on this issue, at least in the conventional political spectrum, uh, we are trying to sound that similar alarm uh, and say that there is real trouble ahead and there really needs to be a change, of course, there needs to be action and an establishment that is now right of center, rather than engaging us on the substance of the issue, uh, is trying to smear us and cut off funding and, and uh, shut down the debate and shut off dissent. Uh, and those dynamics are so parallel and it seems to be the knee-jerk 
response of establishment uh, entities to rather than engage the voices to actually shut them down. We're going to shut this conversation down now, but that's because we're going to go across to the conference room. We're Excellent. going to be joined by Steve Clemens, and we're going to have a conversation with you, which everyone can also watch online. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much for having me. And that's the book.